Yeah. 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 Sorry, Joshua, it is time. It's time. <laughs> so I'm filling in tonight because we have, at this point, three of our board members <laughs> who are assuming. We're just going to so, <laughs> We made it. Yeah, we made it, though. So um, welcome, everybody. And I will call the meeting to order. And we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. I make a motion to adopt the agenda. <laughs> Diana, will you second? I do second. Yes. I have a motion and a second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Okay, that passes. And uh, next on the agenda is public comment. And uh, Megan Higgins is first. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I have to read this. I have to this thing. Okay. So, um, let's see. Yep. The board president may interrupt or terminate an individual's statement when it is personally directed discriminatory, abusive, obscene, irrelevant, or too lengthy. Public comment period is not a time for dialogue between the board and the public. The board will not respond with statements, questions, or challenges made during the public comment period, and there will be no back and forth dialogue. Please know that the board's silence is neutral, and it is neither a signal of agreement or disagreement with the speaker's remarks, although the board chair may ask a speaker a clarified question, and each speaker has three minutes. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. I'm speaking tonight as a parent and community member. First, I want to address the article that was in the Quincy Post Register with the interview with the school board president. I must say that reading the comments of the school board president was very disappointing. I've been coming to school board meetings since October, and after each presentation to the board by school personnel about programs on student achievement, the board expresses appreciation for the hard work that district staff is doing to educate students. I can't recall an instance in which the board expressed disapproval of the district's academic efforts. So to read the comments in the paper was very surprising to me. I feel for the teaching staff. It must be demoralizing for them to read that article. As a parent of a student in Quincy, it concerns me that the board president would give an interview to the press that criticizes hardworking educators rather than recognizing and praising all the accomplishments they and the students have achieved. It is disappointing. It is not only the people in this community who read the newspaper either. As a community member, I'm embarrassed that other communities will read that article and think our schools are failing our students. That kind of negative media attention, however small it may be, is divisive and humiliating. I hope for the sake of our district that a more productive and positive approach will be adopted moving forward. Our students and teachers certainly deserve more respect, understanding, and consideration. Next, I want to comment on dress codes. I heard dress codes mentioned at the last two board meetings with a couple members of the board commenting on their distaste for how some students, primarily girls, are dressing at school. Before engaging in further discussion or making decisions on the dress code, I would caution the board to do some research on how dress codes can disproportionately affect students of color and female students. A 2022 report from the Government Accountability Office found that districts who implement dress codes target clothing that is typically worn by girls more often than they restrict clothing that is typically worn by boys. This can be damaging to girls' body image and self-esteem. In addition, they found that most school districts who have strict dress codes have higher enrollments of students of color, and these policies end up targeting those students, causing them to miss valuable instructional time and experience shame. In addition to targeting girls and people of color, in my own experience, I have seen how dress codes can negatively impact low-income students. Sometimes the hand-me-downs simply don't fit, and there may be a little skin showing or some holes in their pants. Instead of shaming the students, we should be happy that they're in school, glad they're showing up and ready to learn. 
For the teachers who have to enforce these dress codes, you'd be asking them to risk breaking the bonds and relationships they've spent time and effort to form with their students. As a former teacher who worked at several schools with strict dress codes, I can tell you it's such a humiliating experience for the students to be questioned about their clothes. It puts them on guard, makes them mistrustful of staff members, and often makes them defiant due to the shame they feel. There's a lot of useful research out there, and I urge the board to take time to really look through it before proposing any changes to what is currently in place. While I understand the concern that students may not know how to dress for the workplace, there are ways to deliver that information without negatively impacting our students. Thank you. We just wanted to take a minute. Thank you. Thank you. You're a Thank you. Much more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all. It's been, it's been a pleasure. It's been a real honor to, to be able to do people work for the last their hard years. So thank you for all the work that you all will always through. be remembered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Your leadership, it means more just than we can possibly yes, express. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, Camille Jones is next. Hello. Um, I also wanted to come and speak today just to show appreciation with Trisha. Um, as a teacher, I've presented quite a few times to the board over the years, and I've always felt that you really believed in my work and pushed me to keep strengthening it in service of our students. Um, and as a parent now, my daughter's starting first grade tomorrow. Um, I'm just seeing the, the echoes of all of your work in her experience at school, both the fact that she gets to go to a school all the way through fifth grade. This just I was reminded of that yesterday. And um, the beautiful building that she's in in Angel Lakes and all of the opportunities, experiences that are coming her way because of the work that you've sponsored as a board um, board member in our school district. I just, I'm so thankful that this is the moment that she's in our schools right now. Um, and then I, I mostly wanted to speak and thank you so much for the impact you've had on me personally um, as, a, as an adult, as an educator, as a human. Um, I used to think that the opportunity I had to make a difference in the lives of my students was within the walls of my classroom. And Trisha was one of the first people that really helped me to understand how much was happening outside of my classroom that impacted my experience with my students every day. And so just in conversations with you over the years, but also watching you and your work has helped me to really understand how I can be an active advocate um, in my community and in our state and around the country. Um, I've seen you as an example of a female leader in our community and a leader in education as a fellow farmer's wife and a mother. Um, sometimes all that feels really hard to juggle, but uh, I've been really encouraged by having you as a role model. And I hope that as I continue to grow in my career, I can be a similar model for others, um, being an encourager and a support just by the way that I lead and I live. So I'm really, really excited for you and your new position. I'm excited for the opportunity that our state will have with you leading WASDA. Um, I'm sad to see you leave the board, but I, I know our paths will continue to cross and I'm excited for what that might bring as well. So thank you so much. For those of you who don't know, Mel is Teacher, Washington State Teacher of the Year, since you've had some pretty big state mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> sure. Was that 2017? 2017. Well, thank you all. It's very appreci appreciated and I, I'm very humbled. Thank you. Okay. Would you like to approve the uh, consent agenda? Sure. <laughs> I think it's to approve the consent agenda. <laughs> Second. Yeah. We have a motion and second to approve the consent agenda items. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Yeah. Great. She's here. She's here. Um, <laughs> sorry. 
Yeah, yeah we put those sound panels in. We could have heard yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 kind of magic, like you just yeah. hear. Yeah, yeah. 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 Great. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, we are moving into reports, and our first one is the long range facilities planning report. From Tom and company. Yep, I have a few guys <laughs> that are here with me. Uh, you come down right if you want. Pat, if you want to come up again. And uh, so we want to talk about facilities. But first, I want to say thank you for building us a nice bathing shop. Trish, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I, 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 I just say, you had a great idea. The plan was wonderful with the farming you know, experience that you have and all that stuff. You just really appreciate it. I, uh, all joking aside, thank you for the work that you've done. It's really been wonderful. So thanks. Okay, so let's go to the facilities plan. Uh, we, uh, we were asked tonight to come to you and just kind of <clears throat> kind of give you a, uh, an overview of what the uh, facilities planning committee has been up to. And, uh, and I've got some people I'd like to introduce first, if I could, and that is Riley Unger. He's a committee member, uh, a part of our plan, and he is a community member. Pat Conley is a community member. David Bodine, uh, he kind of put things together, got things running, and, and uh, worked worked at facilitating it with us. And then Phil Crocker, who is uh, he, he brought most of our data and all the information that we needed to have to be able to be successful putting this plan together, the long range plan together. So uh, those are the guys that are here with me tonight. Was anybody else on a kind of was on the other committee as well? So. And Shannon, and yeah, there we go. Thank you. I can't forget But uh, but anyway, so we're just here to kind of report on that. So um, I'm just going to get started. So we completed all of our short-term objectives from the 2020 facilities plan. Uh, they were we improved the location of the Innovation Academy to better uh, execute the specialized educational programs. As you know, we bought the old Quincy School and we moved the Innovation Academy into there. So. And then we improved the location of the district office to bring staff together for better efficiency. Well, you guys are sitting in it. So here we are. And as you've seen it, it turned out to be a really nice facility. And we've got a lot of staff here that I think it's it's working very well for the efficiency piece. And then you improved the maintenance shop to expand their storage. And then we uh, worked since we're receiving out of there. So we were able to expand that and, and get some open bays in there so we can protect our uh, maintenance equipment and all that stuff. So... It's been really nice, and those are the those are the short term projects that we had on the 2020 plan, and we've completed all of those, which is really nice. The next thing we did in the 2020 plan is we evaluated our short to midterm objectives that we had, and the focus of that was the Quincy Middle School, and we we as a committee determined that we needed a deeper analysis uh, in order to determine the, the best approach in addressing the school space challenges they have. So the district engaged in a planning committee representative of uh, Quincy, the Quincy community, including industry, local government, residents, parents, teachers, and school administrators. The committee met four times between November 2023 and June of 2024. Many generated a consensus consideration for the school board. And the purpose of our, our uh, committee, I'm going to let Riley share a few of his share his thoughts. There you go. Um, my name is Riley Yogurt. I'm happy to be on the committee and happy to present to you tonight. Um, I am a community member now, but I did teach in the Quincy School District for um, one year, 2019-2020 um, school year. So I have I taught music and have walked the halls of the new Quincy Middle School and also the new high school and am married to a QSD teacher, and I'm happy to still uh, volunteer my time uh, in the arts programs. And so our committee purpose was um, to update the long range facility plan last completed June of 2020. And so we reviewed uh, enrollment pr uh, projection data as well as looked at the functional adequacy of the building, uh, the capacities that we're at now, um, and how we are utilizing those buildings. And we also looked at the physical condition of the buildings in the district. And our purpose was evident by our discussions that as a committee, we wanted to continue the long standing uh, commitment of the uh, Quincy School District Board and the community at large um, to really uh, take seriously and protect the, the facility assets that the community owns and to be forward thinking. 
um, and proactive and making our decisions um, in advance to make our school system better, not only from a facilities perspective. So next, our committee outcome was that we, um, we used that information, the data and the educational programming discussions um, to update the plan. And then next you'll see just a, a, a little snapshot of how our process went gathering the information and certainly taking time, uh, small groups, larger discussions to really process the data, uh, make sense of it. And then we did come up with a long range facility master plan. And then tonight well, we'll briefly uh, touch on a couple of the short and long term uh, facility improvements that we discussed as a committee um, and feeling in a good position that we have time and also uh, reasonable um, access to the funds to accomplish our goals. Um, next is a list of uh, some of the data that we've looked at, the educational programs, certainly important to the discussion is what is being offered um, matters and the spaces um, in the building should re reflect appropriately to meet the needs and to support those educational goals. The enrollment projections, also a big impact on facility needs and building usages. A capacity analysis, where are we actually sitting in the buildings? Um, what the buildings can reasonably accommodate, considering the class sizes, the size of the room, the scheduling of the uses of the room, et cetera. Uh, utilization, um, look at how many are actually sitting in those buildings and what it looks like for the future. And then the condition reports of those buildings, considering the physical elements, as well as the functionality, uh, meaning how well it actually supports the educational programs occurring within the buildings. Again, looking at the size, the equipment, technology, storage, et cetera. Um, next is a show just the enrollment projections that we looked at for the entire district. You will see um, the best estimate green line right in the center and certainly a low one and then one goes high. Um, we felt that the green was probably more conservative and that we felt that somewhere between the green and the purple was where we were likely um, to land, not expecting anything major one way or the other, but slight to upward uh, trend of enrollment. And, and you will see that of the various methodologies for calculating the enrollments, most of them show that the district will rise uh, by a couple hundred students over the next several years, uh, but certainly something to review uh, frequently. And then next breaks it down to the elementary level. Um, it looks like the best estimate is going down, which is also, so we are, probably are sitting in the green to the purple again. Uh, we are not unique in birth rates declining in the county, uh, but young families with school-aged children coming into the district is certainly holding that line. Well, and that we'll also see again, some capacity information for the elementary school later. And then the middle school, um, experiencing some tightening and bubbles of students coming in. And we see that kind of slight upward trend, which also the capacity analysis will show that we believe that to be true. And then next, not surprisingly, that at the high school, continuing that slight upward movement, but nothing crazy and nothing too drastic one way or the other. Uh, the combined information next on the on all the buildings in the school, you will see the current utilization without the portables. That's important to note because those portables are not the permanent solution to, to uh, the facilities um, needs. And so you'll see the current utilization with portables kind of going from ancient lakes down and across the physical condition score, as well as the functional adequacy score. And we're sitting now with the current utilization of the buildings at 80%. And if you remember the kind of that mid to downward trajectory over the next six to seven years, uh, utilization certainly being in the, in the, the 80 to low 70%. So not certainly not full uh, in the elementary schools. One thing that will come up also a little bit later that we noted was that the Mount, Mountain View Elementary School receiving the lowest uh, physical condition score uh, an elementary built in 1954. Um, and then Quincy Middle School, same with what we looked at the projections going up, currently sitting at 91%, and that is a very tight 91% and then very rapidly getting to that 100% mark for the Quincy uh, Middle School. And so um, if we think about 
programs like science, PE, resource room, all of the above needing that specialized equipment and usage space. Um, certainly will need that space for specialty programs, especially as a building not designed specifically customized as a middle school. Um, the other alternative is seeing class sizes rise so much that they are so full that uh, program, program programmatic offerings and special programs might reduce and see class sizes rise, which is uh, one of the things in which we wanted to address the, the full middle school. And one, Quincy High School, 86% currently up to 97%. Um, we feel this okay rate, slight room to grow, also considering students coming out for running start. Um, and of course, uh, excellent physical condition description, which we like to see. Um, uh, Quincy Innovation Academy, uh, you will see a, a nice red pour on the side. Uh, that is primarily due to the, to the portable usage which is uh, done on purpose. And so since they don't have those specialty spaces we would like to see, and also for that particular uh, space as those programs are developing over time, um, we felt like as those needs are emerging that that could be addressed um, also as they arise and not an immediate um, cause for concern, but allowing that program to develop and acknowledging that there is a massive improvement from the current situation. Right, Pat. <laughs> oh, this, this is a tough act to follow. <laughs> you won't get that much from me, but <laughs> I'm Patrick Conley. I'm a 41 year resident of Quincy. Um, I've been quite involved with the community things between the Port District, um, different chambers, the chambers, and very other things. So I was asked, uh, when we got all done with everything, we came down with the conclusion of what needed to be improved and what didn't need to be improved. The number one object was the two weak schools that we have are Mountain View and the middle school. Uh, Mountain View kind of needs to be uh, blown off the face of the earth. And... Okay. I'm a realist. <laughs> Well, it's in it's in a bad it's a bad part. It's kind of hemmed in. It's probably one of the older schools around, and it needs the most work to be done to it. The middle school, uh, being at the old high school, was taken over, and you put as many students in it. It's probably jammed up about all it can handle and really not facilitated to handle the size of the students or everything else that is that. The big question we had is if you go through and do them, which way do you do it? Uh, Mountain View probably needs to be moved to a different area, which I uh, don't exactly know where that would be if you go west of the high school is a possibility. The middle school would probably be turned and put out like where the softball field is. And so you can keep both schools running at the same time before they're built. The main object on uh, the middle school was what do you do with the pack and the theater and the gyms? I had a hard time with this one because mm -hmm. um, I'm also one of the founders of Quincy Valley Allied Arts. And we've had a, a long history in that school and I wanna thank the school board on behalf of Quincy Valley Allied Arts for all the uh, cooperation we've had over, over the years, being able to use the facilities, help improve the facilities. It, it means a lot to us. And I've always taken a, a particular pride in how we handled them, how we treated them, how we left them when we were done, and what we did in the community. But after we got to thinking about it, it doesn't function very well for the middle school. It's not big enough. It uh, would be out of the way. And the probably best would be to go and take it down and work into the new school with a, a better facility. You can still have stage, but make that work into the cafeteria and everything else that would hold all the students at one time instead of just 330. And I know there's 330 seats there. <laughs> uh, the gyms is another story. They're probably, you know, very old. They've been renovated, but they would probably also need to go down and just make better use of the facility, the other facilities with the new school. So that's about the highest we did have uh, on the screen. We had a projection 
they provided us with through 24 to 28 at different percentage rates of increase, what it would cost to build them if you were to float a bond um, any one of those years. And there's about $10, 000, $10 million difference between if you leave the facilities or if you tear the, the pack and the gym down. So that's about all I have on. Okay. That is our report, unless uh, David Phil had anything to add. So, thank you. Know. We'll open it up to questions. Phil, do you have something you got? No, I do think it was great working with the committee, and so I really appreciated it. And it was very thoughtful. And I think Pat did a, did a nice job articulating the struggle we're doing. Which we're authentic and good. But I think well, I'm very <laughs> and he was part of the struggle, but that's okay. No, it was really fun to have a committee put together and do this. And we've done this, this is, I think, the third time that I remember us doing it. I think it was 15 that we did it the, the first time with the facilities committee. And then we've done it 20 and then uh, now 24. So it's a good roadmap for us. Um, so it's really kind of nice to see that work when, it, when we are doing it. How it comes together and all the data points that we have, we work up, we work off of all that, and it was nice to have uh, the consultant, uh, Bill, yeah. there with us, with Crocker, uh, Peter Crocker. That's what it is, okay. It's and uh, it was nice to have him there uh, to help us with that. And then David kind of put things together. David, of course, you know, was our, our project manager, and he helped us with all that. And it was really helpful to have those guys uh, kind of lead the way. So anyway, okay, thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. I do have a question. Okay. Uh, in the facilities um, recommendations, does that also include like the grassy area as well? Like, it, it, uh, yeah, the cost is yes, yeah. Okay, because yeah. you're saying the middle school would be built where the fields are right now, right? So then it'd be remodeling the field as well. That would be yes. remodeling the fields and all. Yeah, all the fields would be new. The whole it'd be a whole new facility. Because I know right now the fields aren't to their size either. So there's right, very extension true. in high school. That's very true. Right? That would be more outfitted for a middle school. So the high school or the middle school would go where the current fields are, and then the demolition would happen. That's where the the new fields would go. That's a nice. And that's for, a nice part for, about the middle yeah. school. What about so you're saying Mountain View where it's at right now is too small? So likely would be looking at a different piece. Probably a different location. I have a question, Tom. Um, yeah. If obviously, ideally, you get one bond and do both of these at the mm -hmm. same time. If they um if, if they have to be scheduled out, I, I'm guessing the middle school is the recommendation to go first just based on the good the capacity. Can we come up with an analysis on that? Would you yeah. cover that? What, 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 would, what would potentially be the order? What's to do both at the same time. Right. 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 Yep. Um in uh, 2027. Okay. Yeah. So we're not this is not like an immediate run the bond now situation. Uh, we feel like we have the time or that it would be better to wait considering the election year now mm -hmm. and waiting through some of the next couple of years and then run the bond in 2027. We didn't really have a preference if you oh, no, no, only no. could do one, which one did you do first? The middle school hits capacity is the in less than 20, yeah. earlier than 2027, yeah. correct? We've done some modifications to the footprint this year to allow for that. So Tom yeah. and David, yeah. We're very busy this summer. They added two new classrooms, um, actually three. Three, yeah. Uh, so we uh, so we added three new spaces to the middle school. I mean, we are now making use of every single part of that building. Uh, and the challenging thing with the pack is it's it's used one period a day for advisory, and the rest of the time it's it's wide open. And that square footage is a very large footprint. That's counting against our square footage and state match as well. And we would be eligible for that. I'm just thinking about like healthy development and grow. I know with the uh, Jackrabbit Way development, um, is that going to be at all affecting Mountain View districting or ALE? Right now they're in ALE, but depending on what you know who moves in and what that that demographic looks like, we could be in a situation where we, we're rebounding as well. Prior, prior to this election, residential. Yep, yeah, yeah. rebounding is also going to be the conversation in the near future. And we have space to build out there too. Mm -hmm. you know, also just talk about that the state funds <laughs> that was not actually eligible for the it's, state. It's not funds. eligible until 
2034. They made a miscalculation and it really oh. were not eligible. But the RAC, you saw the escalation right. cost. They outstripped what you would be eligible for. So the committee was like, well, it doesn't matter because right. we, if we wait for the dollar, we'll spend more money. <laughs> so they didn't factor in when they right. when okay. gave the clarification. And that was just a sign. Was, is that just sure. for the mills? Oh, level that right. we were Correct. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. why, why weren't we eligible? They miscalculated in March and they gave us the numbers that they gave. This amount of years. The oh, I see. Yeah. So, so it's like even water. further beyond 33. Yeah. And I, I feel like I just clarify one piece. Uh, on the capacity, that's programmatic capacity, if we recall. So it takes in consideration how they're using the building. When you reach 100%, there's this practical thing. If you've got another kid, they'll just change. They can. They have the ability to change the program a little bit or the principles and accommodate more kids. So it isn't like you can't physically shove another kid in the building. Um, there is space for that. It's just not ideal. Yeah. It becomes a yeah, come down program at that point. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a, the committee really did a nice job understanding that calculation. It's not just and the good news is we've experienced that. You know, we built this high school with these spaces for programs that weren't even fully developed yet. And then once we build it, you know, the way that CT is taking off, the way the arts are taking off, those programs can really flourish under the right spaces. And when you don't have the right spaces, they you are just constant state of struggle. Mm -hmm. And and we've been just so blessed with the high school is kind of that example. We have this amazing programs, you know, programmatic space. Well, one other other thing that and on the financing part of it is the the development that is happening in Quincy and all over is bringing a bigger tax base into here than we could imagine. And it could raise between now and. 2028 20, or 29, you know, a billion or more dollars. Right. Um, like I said, I've been a I've been a port commissioner for 26 years. When I started, we were 650 million was our valuation of the district, which is similar to the school district. It's eight and a half billion right now. And so that makes a big difference in what we can bring in, what we can't bring in. Pat, may I ask, as far as the growth of Quincy, are we going up the hill or are we going to be we're going all over? Okay. Yeah. But the canals were a problem for a while, but yeah. Well, the canals, the power is a big issue right at the moment. Is what we have is where the power is available, where it is can't be available. So, but if you look when you run the bill, run the levy, that might be an opportune time because it's going to be more into the town. Right. And I can't remember what the final total is. What we figured, it's like forty six or forty eight percent. Yeah. Was the yeah, but generation. even that was a generous estimation. We yeah, were, we were pretty sure that was even in a drop. Right, number. right. And this could be a lot more since then. Yes, we're at least two billion higher than we were when we passed yeah. that last month. And we've seen that in progress with the other facilities being built right. in the city. Correct. Yeah. They, they dropped much yeah. lower. So, any more questions? Right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Yeah, the thank committee. You. Thank you for all of your thank work. You. It's yeah. um, it's Thanks really rare for a board to have that kind of information, that detailed information. It's been interesting. You. Yeah. <laughs> you have the whole, the full long range plan uh, on the attachment there that is with this. So uh, if you have any questions, reach out. Right. We'll answer for you. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. Maybe Pat will get one last dance sing a song. I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and let Pat have a last. That would be great. It'll, thank you, Tom. Always going to have it anyway. It feels like it's needed. <laughs> great. Okay. Thank you so much. Our next report is the superintendent's report. All right. Well, I was hoping with Pat being here that we get a song that we got to know we brought up. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we can do a duet. We can do a duet. So really, I guess my report, I'm going to keep it brief because it is all things back to school. Uh, since our last meeting, our teach, teaching staff engaged in four really good lit days with a lot of energy. And I was explaining to someone, you know, when we came back from COVID, every, and the restrictions, and, and I guess it would have been 22, 23, we were just so excited from normal. We were really excited, and there's a lot of buzz around that year. You know, last year, we we're still getting our feet under us, getting, you know, what normal really feels like. And this year, the, the buzz was really around the work that we're, we're continuing. 
And we're not adding anything new. We're just going deeper in what we're already doing and what our strategic plan has outlined for us. And that feeling of going deeper in what we've already been doing, um, there's just a lot of really good excitement around that. So just really thank the directors for all their work uh, in getting in a really concise lead day. The principals did an amazing job. The teachers were in it to win it. Just really proud of the Quincy School District staff and just how focused they are on teaching and learning right now at all levels. Really excited about that. We had a wonderful district day. Uh, we filled up the pack. It was kind of incredible to, to see, you know, 500 staff members in our new pack. Um, the middle school, I remember my first day as a staff member being in the middle school pack, which was a high school at the time, you know, thinking how big it felt. And now we're in this pack and it's filled up. And just again, really good energy, uh, a really uh, just good time with welcome everybody back. Um, and again, I want to thank Tom. Oh, Tom is still here. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, came back. Right I just want to thank uh, Tom and maintenance and grounds for the hard, hard work that they've done. And I'm just so proud of how beautiful our schools look. I, they they do shine. And uh, I know it's not easy. Uh, they built, Tom personally built three classroom spaces, Tom and David Day. Which means our facilities director and David Day are our assistant facilities director out there swinging a hammer, uh, painting. Uh, just really appreciating Tom and David and your whole crew. Uh, I want to thank Jessica Blancas. I don't know if you've seen just the steady stream of back to school information that we've been, you know, I'm sure the kids just love it for the last two weeks. We <laughs> remind them that it's all <laughs> And tech department, we put up it back top 10 things you need to do to get ready for school. Um, that was released today or yesterday. So just really thankful for Jessica and Tech. And uh, just again, thanks to all of our teachers and admin who have been working so hard really these you know last few weeks to get ready for tomorrow. And we are ready. We are ready. Uh, uh, and then also just a reminder of the board, uh, wall game game is September 6th. It's our first home football game against SELA. Uh, there'll be a wall of fame uh, dinner uh, if you want to attend from 4.30 to 6.30 with the inductees, kind of a, a pre-thing at the high school. Uh, and then the ceremony is will be uh, at halftime of that football game. That's just a really, it's a great event. So really excited for that. And I also would like to personally thank Patricia Lubach just for all of your work and just how much you meant to the school district and to me and uh, to everyone in this room. This is your last meeting. Um, and I did this, I think, some time ago, but you're going to hear it again. So, here's Patricia Lubach. Sorry. I think everybody heard it here. Some more to know. So, 19 years as a board member, that's four elections. You've been elected four times. That's on, you know, give or take 418 board meetings, which equates to 630 hours or 26 days. You worked with 19 other board members, three time board president. One board of the year, seven boards of distinction, six levies, one bond campaign that was successful the first time around. Which... Next one's on you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, uh, uh, $120 approximately in capital projects, two major grade level uh, configurations. When Trisha started, we offered zero college credits at the high school. Now we're almost to 90. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're at an AA. Oh, did you say open it? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. we're over 90. I'm a fact checker to the audience. Uh, we're over 90, and that, and that is life changing for our students when they can get college credits on AA and not have to leave. Uh, so that's amazing. Uh, we had zero preschool slots. We now have 48 slots. You worked for four superintendents, problem all of two QHS grads, and zero dollars in salary. So just, <laughs> you did it all that for me. And we're just so thankful that you did it all. And uh, again, I'm just honored um, and feel so privileged to be a part of that journey with you. And we know you're going to do nothing but amazing things in your new role. And we're really excited to have a uh, Quincy uh, former board member leading at a state level, you and Alex Holt. You know, it's two former board members coming up and doing amazing things. Okay. So beware. Yeah. Beware. <laughs> so just thank you, Trisha. Thank you. Sorry.
Well, thank you all. I did get a chance to uh, say a few words to the whole staff yesterday, which was really fun. Um, that I love that day, the first day of, of, of the staff all coming together. It has been an honor to um, serve in this role. I clearly did not do all those things myself. Those were all done <laughs> by many of the people who are in the room tonight and people before you and, and lots of folks out in every school that we have, school and building. Um, so uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. I've loved serving. Thank you. And um, I know we've got a board set up to do well in the future. But if that is how we are next. We are too. All right. Okay. Wait, the student board reps are probably getting ready for school. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first I think they're setting a good example yes. by being yep. ready for school. <laughs> so, and then we've got a board leadership report. And um, Shannon, I think you're going to share up at the yeah. legislative handbook. I tried to click on that attachment. Chat it now. Chapter, yeah, that, that, uh, that link on the uh, board district report with legislative handbook, when I click the attachment, it tells me an application is stopping Chrome from safely connecting. I didn't open it. Oh, you did. Yeah, I, okay. I, well, then I, I, I think you have to invite the, the filters are. I don't like, yeah, I could. I've got it here. So okay. it's the general assembly handbook, and these are all, so WASDA is obviously kind of our go-between between the local school board members and legislation, right? And so these are, correct me if I'm wrong, these are the things that they discuss up in Olympia, right? <laughs> and they bring from WASDA into Olympia. Awesome. For what? I'll have Trisha explain it. I, never it a little bit I'm, I have it in my head. I do not bring it. Yeah. So the General Assembly is when all every single school district in the state, yeah. all 295 of them, have the ability to um, vote on what WASDA's uh, legislative and permanent positions are. They are not creating law. Sometimes in that room, it seems like that people think they're writing law. <laughs> um, that would be lovely, but they're not. <laughs> Um, but what they are is is putting forth the goals of the organization, um, which is um, you know uh, representation of the exactly boards. yeah, and also helping our um, strategic advocacy group know what to advocate for and what to advocate against at the legislature. They don't pick and choose what they advocate for or against. They go off of the member of adopted positions, and the members are all built based off of other school board members throughout the state, so it's not just like a was the assembly of people's school board members just like us so anyway the the handbook just has a lot of different proposals and amendments and ideas of what they are going to present in legislation and so uh come september they do a vote on whether or not these are things that the state is going to continue to move forward in or not um september 20th 21st i think i'm ready to report if there's any issues in there that you would like to have your opinion stated on, let me know one way or the other. So is it like a consensus representative kind of thing? One person delegated from each school board. And so do we like meet beforehand and we, make a consensus we, uh, well? Uh, sure. uh, September we 10th, we're planning over a session. So Shannon will let you know what sections you are responsible for reviewing. Okay. And, and Shan is the, our, our board's delegate mm -hmm. because she's as a legislator. I read through all of them. Mm -hmm. so we should delegate. I wonder if we should all just be aware. Probably. There's really not that much. It's not. It's not a lot. I've run it and studied it for the last two days, and it's not very hard for me anyway to think through it all. So we can, we, can, we can easily do a work session, or you can however you want to do that. Yeah. Kind of maybe review it. Decide. Chad. Chad can decide too. Let me know what you guys want to do. I'm game to whatever. I'll be there to be our lead. And we don't have any policies to review or adopt. That would change soon. That is changing. Um, no unfinished business, no new business. Um, board requests for future topics or information. You're just waiting for retreat. <laughs> retreat. How much has that come out? It should have been. I talked to her about it today. Like an official like, calendar? No, I do a poll. It's, yeah, because we get the dates. Like, that's me. And zero. So we start out. But we'll we'll try again. <laughs> yeah. We can do it. We can do it. Okay. Then we um uh if there's no other business, we are adjourned. I want credit for running 40 minutes.